For this video, we will be dimensioning drawing 2-2, which is actually drawing 1-5, the adjusting arm, which we drew in a previous unit. And we're going to be going through the process and putting the correct dimensions on those. I also have opened my original drawing 1-5, the adjusting arm, and I see all my dimensions there. There are two errors that I see that we're going to have to correct as we go along. So I'm going to get right to it and start putting in some of my dimensions. Uh, let's do this uh, linear dimension on the left. I'm going to jump back over to my model space, make sure I'm in my dimension line layer, annotate a dimension here, 4.5. And let's do this little radius of 1.25. Radius right here, 1.25. Now this is very important that we don't place that measurement directly on top of a center line because it makes it difficult to read. So I'm going to squeeze it in here. There we go. And let's see here. Let's do this radius up here now. This is a case where our measurement is right on top of our center line and that is the first uh, correction that we need to make. When we place this, we need to make sure we do it in such a way that it is not on top. Let's see if we can squeeze that in there. That's looking pretty good. I've also noticed that when we put these original center lines in, we must have done that before we learned how to actually make those little plus signs in the center. Those uh, center marks, they're just not looking very good. So I'm going to have to come back and correct those uh, before we finish that. I'll have to keep that in mind. So let's do some of these measurements up here. This 0.50 and this 45 degree linear dimension here and an angular dimension for this 0.45 and this might be another one that we're going to have to take a look at. Let's see what the original drawing had. Okay. So we are coming up off of oh, so we're coming around this 0.50 so we can squeeze that in there. So let's go ahead and put that in again and select two different lines and there we go. Pull that up around that 0.50. And we got this one, got that one, this one. Let's do this diameter because we have a full circle and a radius because we only have an arc. So we'll do a radius on the arc. And I see it put that center mark in that I didn't want. So I'll have to turn that off. Diameter on this one. I'm going to double click on my dimension and I'm actually going to select both of these dimensions so that when I change this center mark to none it turns them both off at the same time otherwise I'd have to turn them off individually which is an extra step so this is just saving me a couple seconds uh, let's see here I got a seven inch one at the bottom and that goes to my center mark. Now I'm going to run into some issues because I want it to run to that nice plus sign, but I don't have that nice plus sign. So let's go ahead and put those in so that we're not going to run into any issues. I'm going to delete out all of these center marks. Oop, got one of my dimensions there. All right, and I'm going to switch over to my center line layer, and I'm going to put some center marks in everywhere that we need them to be, and then we're going to come back and edit those a little bit. Let's bring this center mark over and delete the one underneath it. Let's see here. All right. Let's bring this center mark over. 
and delete the one underneath it. Same with this. And the purpose of this is so that everything looks aesthetically pleasing. We want these drawings to not only be readable, but we want them to look like we know what the heck we're doing. It's always important in industry that when you provide someone with a drawing, they can look at it and they, they know that you know what's going on. And have, make sure we got a little gap there. Let's take a look here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. These are all looking pretty good. Let's take a look at this end one. Let's bring this back so we have a little bit of a gap. Always want a little bit of a gap so we know where the object lines end and the center marks or dimension lines begin. Okay, so that's looking much better. So let's go ahead and put in these dimensions. So we got seven inches to the center mark, then we come back a little bit here. So to our center mark here, seven inches, and let's jump back and change that to our dimension line layer. Delete this little green center mark below that. A dimension from this mark to this mark of two inches. Delete our little piece of center mark. And one more from here all the way down here. And we want to make sure those are in line with each other. Delete that center mark. Okay, let's take a look here. I have this dimension in the center now. This is the other error on the drawing. We, there's about a couple different uh, rules that's breaking with this. Number one, we have an arrowhead pointing to a object line which is a no-no because that means we're using an object line as an extension line. Additionally, when we have a rounded part, a lot of times it's easier just to dimension that radius than to put a linear dimension on it. But the other rule that we're actually breaking is we have a dimension that's sitting directly on our part. Yeah, now the reason why I mentioned using a radius measurement instead of the linear dimension is if we put a linear dimension on and try to pull this off it's not going to look very good. So we're going to do a radius and we're just going to pull that up here and then turn off that center mark. And now all of our dimensions are outside of our part, they're not sitting on top of it. Nothing is interfering with any other lines or anything, no lines are on top of each other and it looks very professional, it looks very nice. So let's take a look here, let's count our dimensions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Take a look at our drawing, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it looks like we have everything here. Let's jump over to A size paper and see if this is going to fit. I'm still scaled at 1 to 1. I'm cutting off my 45 a little bit and it looks like I'm cutting off some of these on the side. So let's jump back here and we'll bring in these measurements. We can bring them in pretty close, but we want them to look good. They have to be far enough away that they're readable that it looks good, but it has to be close enough that it fits on the paper we're trying to print. It's bad to have dimensions that get cut off. So let's take a look here. It looks like these on the end we can adjust ever so slightly. Just pull these down a little bit more. Let's pull this one up a little bit. Let's take a look at that. And now all of our dimensions fit. This is going to be drawing 2-2 and I'm going to do a 
application menu, I'm going to do a save as. And I'm going to save this as to Olson 2-2 so that it saves a copy of the original file. So I still have the original file. And if I want to print, right click plot, preview that, and everything looks pretty good. Right click plot, let's say this is Olson 2-2, and we are all done.